Hey, good morning, everybody. That's okay. Maybe if I get you to stand, and we'll try that again. Good morning, everybody. That's much better, much better. Want to welcome you if you're watching online with us today. Always a privilege to just gather, whether it's in person or online, and uh, just want to greet all of you today. Hopefully, you so far this morning, somebody has at least shaken your hand, gave you a nice smile, had some conversation. And uh, if you're visiting with us today, just a huge uh, warm welcome to you. We're, we're honored that you're here. And uh, if you're looking for a home church, check out Streams Church. Uh, there's a group of us here trying to do life. We don't have it all figured out, but hey, we know one who does, and that's who we're serving. His name is Jesus. And so just glad you're here. Lots to talk about today. Um, we're going to have some worship. Uh, we'll fill you in on some things that are coming up. Uh, we're going to dive into God's Word in just a little bit. But before we do all of that and get started, why don't you find somebody, greet them if you haven't already, maybe meet someone for the first time, and we'll get started with worship in just a few moments. Thank you. 
we're singing that lyric, Spirit Breakout. I'm standing in front and thinking, Lord, how do I transition our time from this to, to your word? Because all of this is, is important. And sometimes when we think of Spirit Breaking Out, we think of the day of Pentecost. You know, sometimes we box the Lord in and we think that's what it looks like. You know, the place goes crazy and read the book of Acts, the purpose the Spirit broke out was so that people would be saved. And they began to speak in other languages so that others would hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And yet the Spirit can also break out in, in the quiet times. And Elijah was expecting the thunder and the lightning and yet God chose to speak in a whisper. But however the Spirit decides to break out, it's for one purpose. It's for that people would know Jesus. That people would know Jesus. And I think it's a good reminder for us as a, as a local church, as a congregation, that our, our job description is to take this good news and to share it with those who don't have it. And it's in those moments we need the Spirit to break out. And this is phenomenal. We get to gather like this. It's so important. It's biblical. That we be equipped. And we have these gatherings because we were created to worship God. That, that's why we exist, to worship Him. But He's left us here on planet Earth for a purpose. Because your neighbors, your family, and your friends don't yet know Him. And He's invited us to come together to hear the teachings of his son Jesus so that we would go and, and make disciples and we need his spirit to do that and so father as we gather in your name today we lift up the one and only name the name of Jesus the name above all names each one of us in this place we've got our stuff some are working through sickness some are working through employment issues relationship issues there's all kinds of things represented here and God, you're, you are concerned and you are aware. And you said your son Jesus' name is above every single thing that has a name. And, and so we don't pray to one who is dead, one who is unaware, one who is too busy in some other part of the world. But Father, we pray to you all knowing everywhere. You're into everything. You know the deepest part of our hearts, each one of us here. And you're able to work through all of that and still remind us and still teach us that the stuff that we face and endure, even that has a purpose. And so Lord, whatever needs to be done here today, wherever we are on this journey with you, some are not even yet, some are beginning, some have been well on in the years. Lord, one thing is for sure, this is all about you. It's all about you, 100%. If we ever get to a place, God, where we think it's about us, would you remind us, would you correct us, would you rebuke us? It's about you. And we've come to worship you today. And now we're asking, Lord, that your spirit would move in our lives, in our hearts, so that we would receive your word, and we would leave this place sent out, ready to make a difference. Sent out, ready to let you be first in our lives sent out knowing that our situation isn't hopeless, it's hopeful because of you, because of you, Father. And so we humbly submit ourselves to your ways. We recognize you as our King, our Lord, our Savior. And so, Father, today would you speak to us? Would your spirit break out? Whether it's now or later today or tonight when we're laying on our bed or tomorrow at work, would your spirit break out? us with you, with your heart. And so Father, we thank you. We thank you for this. We don't take this for granted. We can come and sing your praises. We can worship you, our King. Thank you, Lord. We just extend hearts of gratitude to you, Jesus. Without you, this is pointless. God, with you, kids meet in a different area 
just a little bit as we stay in this place and hear from your word. As those watching online hear this today, God, would you do the work that only you can do? Would you meet us where we are? Would you change our lives so we're less like us and more like you? We pray these things in the name above all names, the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He's good, eh? He's so good. He's so good. So good. And I, I don't often refer to myself as pastor. Some of you say, well, well, what do I call you? Bill, Pastor Bill. I mean, you know what I prefer. I just like Bill. But as your pastor, as an overseer of this place, man, I get so encouraged and blessed when I'm standing there and I, and I hear your voices just calling unto the Lord. And that we can come to a place where we realize that our worship team isn't here to entertain us. But we're all here to glorify Jesus Christ. It's just so powerful and amazing. So just thank you for worshiping along the body of Christ today. Um, And I want to just say, if you're new with us visiting today, then, uh, hey, you see in front of you some cards. There's one called I'm New. And uh, if you're brave enough to fill that out, a name, a phone number, an email address, whatever, we would be happy to connect with you sometime this week and just answer any questions you may have for us. Um, And... uh, And if you fill that out today, on your way out, just down the steps, there's an information desk there. If you just pass that in to the individual uh, there, um, we would be happy to give you just a little gift of saying thanks for being with us today. Um, And so you can also see what's going on on the screen there. There's announcements. You can text new. There's a slide there to find out. You QR code the announcements that are happening. Uh, But I want to say this. um, This week coming up, we're having a week of fasting, and uh, don't panic, all right, because it's, uh, it's not for everyone. Uh, it's not a thing that we demand or expect. It's just something uh, us as leadership felt, you know what, Lord, there's, there's power in fasting, and you're wondering, well, I don't know much about fasting. Why don't you go back a couple of months on our YouTube page, and there's two weeks of sermons on, on fasting, and that will just maybe be a good springboard, but there's power in fasting. And, uh, and as I was thinking about this back in, in November, December, Lord, when, when will it be, when do we do a week of fasting? And, and I just felt this week leading up, you know, this, this significant week in history, when Jesus marched into the city and everybody is just proclaiming and praising this, the Messiah has come, and then within a matter of a few short days, they're beginning to question who he is. And then by the end of the week, they're, they're calling out, crucify him. And, and we celebrate Easter, the death and resurrection of Jesus. But what a week that he went through. And I thought, Lord, like maybe this would be a great week for us to begin to call on you, begin to just, just give ourselves, submit ourselves. We'll talk more about that in, you know, towards the end of our message. But, but we're inviting you as a church to just partner with us this week. Um, and I'll talk more about that and how that might look in your life in just a little bit. Um, Good Friday's coming up, 1030. We're going to gather here. And uh, we, just, we just invite all of you to come as we reflect the death of Jesus and the purpose of that. And uh, often I grew up going like, what's so good about Good Friday? Well, once you understand uh, what the significance of it is, then you'll know why it's called Good Friday because we know what comes after. And that's why we call it good. And so join with us 1030 this Friday. Easter Sunday, lots going on. We have a breakfast, so come on out at 9 for a light breakfast. We'll have some waffles and fruit, whatever else we're going to have. So you're invited to that. Um, There's an Easter gathering, obviously what we're doing right now. And in that gathering, we're going to have baptisms. And so if you identify with Jesus Christ and you're like, yeah, I follow Jesus, but I haven't yet been water baptized. Guess what? The Bible teaches us that's what we're supposed to do, right? To repent and be baptized. And if you haven't yet been baptized, we want to rejoice with you. We would love, be honored to baptize you in water, just like Jesus was baptized. And so I uh, encourage you to talk to myself, and, uh, and we'll get you all set it up, answer your questions, what that's going to look like, and uh, how that will look. Right now we have one or two individuals that want to be wa- water baptized, and, and I'm, I'm hoping there's going to be many more because it's going to be a Sunday morning of celebration. And so get past all the insecurities, get past all the you know worry, what people think, who cares what people think. You're just obeying what Scripture teaches. All right, so that's happening. We have a, an egg hunt after for our kids, not big kids, all right? If you're like, I don't know, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 62, 82, it's not for you, all right? It's for the little kids. So that's happening after the morning next week. Um, there are some invitations that we would love for you to take. When you came in, there's a little small table just at the entrance. Please take one of these. And if I can get down there quick enough, I'll even hand them out to you to invite somebody. I gave out like 10 of these this week to just people that I know in my circle that don't know Jesus because we just believe he's going to do something great this week and salvations are going to happen and people are going to come to know Jesus. Take one of those. Um, I know announcements are a little long today, but I want to mention this. We had uh, an amazing ministry happened here this past weekend. Friday night, we had, uh, uh, for parents and guardians, called Restored Ministries, who, uh, and, uh, and Matt came in and just shared some things that were, in my mind, like wow moments. I was like, wow, I, 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 it was just so healthy, and, and God-saturated, and uh, everything pointed to Jesus, and uh, talked about, you know, a healthy sexuality and biblical sexuality and what that looks like. And, and so we sat as parents and grandparents and, and, and family on Friday night just to find out how do we keep our kids safe from the world they live in. And so that was powerful. We'll have that on our YouTube page once we get it edited so you can go back and watch that if you missed it. Yesterday we had several uh, guys come out and we, we were just, again, overwhelmed by the love of Jesus. How he can set anybody free. It was so healthy. And so well done. Um, and so we're inviting you just to scan that QR code. Just a simple little survey there asking you what you thought. If we have an overwhelming response of people saying this was so significant, this was so helpful, we'll probably bring Matt back again. And for those of you who couldn't make it because of work or even because of fear, Sometimes we don't come out to these things because we're like, I'm just, I don't want people to think I'm struggling. I don't want people to think I'm addicted to porn. I don't want people to think that there's something wrong with me. That's not necessarily who it's just for. It's for the body of Christ to be healthy. And so if we get a response that, that's healthy, then we may bring Matt back because I may know we live in a world that's so saturated with sexual immorality. It's all around us, and all of us can identify to it. And so we just think this is a move in the right direction for us as a body. And so uh, we'd love your feedback, even today, as we uh, uh, encourage you to give in just a few moments by several ways. If you, you, know, you regularly give to Streams Church, if you want to give an offering in addition to your, your giving to go towards Restored Ministries to just help bless this ministry, um, they're even trying to get together a documentary um, to put it out and, and, and to use it within churches to somehow help steer people in a healthy relationship with Christ, then, then we just encourage you to write, a, write out the Streams Church and, uh, and then put like Restored Ministry and 100% of it will go to, to uh, Restored Ministries. We won't, we're not keeping any of it for it. 100%. And so in our teaching a number of uh, months ago, we talked about tithes and offerings and this will be an offering. And so we encourage you to partner with us on that because I believe this will set so many people free. It's so good. Just, just again, God is so into this. And so uh, just before we take a little break and uh, our kids head out to their ministry area, uh, maybe you're wondering, well, how do I give? If I want to give to Restored Ministries or Streams Church, on the screen there you'll see all kinds of ways to give. You can scan the QR code. You can give in person with uh, envelopes in the seats there. Uh, E-transfer, streamschurchgiving at gmail.com. You can go to our website. You don't even have to do it today. It can be any time. That's the beauty of technology. And so we just thank you for your faithfulness and, and generosity. Uh, as we're, I mentioned last week, and I wonder, should I have said that? But, but I think it's okay. Streams Church is in a bit of a rebuild. And uh, we're moving ahead. And God's got plans and greater days. And we're excited to be a part of all of this. And God often does it through his church. And, and generosity in reaching our city comes through us. His people. That's how it happens. And so thank you for being faithful to that and giving. And so if you have children with you today, there's a ministry for them. Birth up to age uh, preschool anyway, up the stairs there. And uh, you can uh, have your children go there. And if they're older than that, kindergarten, grade five, six, down our stairs, uh, there's a ministry waiting for them. For the rest of you who have to sit up here and listen to me, hey, I want to give you a little break before you do that. Stretch your legs. And uh, if you want to give, bring your kids to their area, say hi to somebody. We'll take five minutes, do that. If you're watching online, don't go anywhere. We're coming right back with the message today.
Okay, thank you for connecting. Gonna invite you to make your way back to your seats. Right on, come on in. As I always normally say, one of my favorite moments of our morning is what we just did, connecting and, and all that fun stuff. Um, how many know what next weekend is? Woo, wow, that was fast. That was good. Somebody's looking forward to Easter. Um, so, so as a church, uh, we're, I mean, we're expecting uh, a very good turnout. And uh, can I just encourage our, our regulars here, when you come in next Sunday morning, um, you know, if we do get a lot of guests, obviously, if you bring somebody, sit with them, okay? Don't like, but if you come and there's no one with you, just encourage you to make your way maybe to more towards the front so that our guests, when they come in, at least the back areas are available for them. They don't feel that awkward moment of trying to walk up and, and, and sit right in the front. But we're just, and I just encourage you to be praying this week. Because Easter is a significant time in a lot of people's lives where they don't normally show up inside of a church, and through invitation, often uh, they're more open to doing that. And so we believe that God's going to use all kinds of great churches around Red Deer and surrounding areas to, to spread his good news. And, and we're part of that. And so, so be praying this week um, for what God is going to do next weekend and hopefully weekends after that. And thankful for what he's done in weekends prior to this. I mean, God has been so good to us as a church. Um, but, you know, sometimes in life um, we... We, when it comes to churches, at least, like, do you ever feel sometimes just everyday life that you, you, there's such a pressure for, for us to be somebody we're not? Anybody else feel like that? Some of you? Some of you? So, I mean, if we're honest, I mean, it's exhausting to keep up with the trends. It's exhausting to, I mean, you, you, sometimes you just feel like you're supposed to look a certain way. Supposed to have it all together. Anybody just you, know, you feel like that? You know, like you're, you're supposed to come across as having no struggles and, and it, life is great and uh, uh, life of a perfection. And the, the problem is sometimes our world is successful in getting us to believe that. And so it creeps its way into our lives as, as brothers and sisters, as the body of Christ. Um, it, it somehow finds its way in and we think that we go to church for like a gathering like this and we feel... We're supposed to have it all together. And we feel like everyone else must, but that's not the case. We can't allow that thinking to come into the church. 
Churches are places where people gather who don't have it all together. That, that's, that's why we exist, all right? We don't have it all together. So, so a group of imperfect people can do life together and not feel the pressure to perform or act like we have it all together. And one of the advantages of being the body of Christ is to be able to freely confess Confess whether it's to one another or confess to God. Lord, I don't have it all together. I haven't figured it all out. God, clean me up. Help me in life. That's why 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins. And so you could even put your name in front of that we and say, if I or if myself, if I confess my sins, God is faithful and just and he's going to forgive me of my sins, and he's going to purify me from all unrighteousness. That's what God promises. A, a few weeks ago, in our Connect Nights, um, by the way, we won't be meeting this Wednesday evening, um, but in our Connect Nights, the series that we were walking through was on prayer. And, and one, of the, one of the teachings was about confession, about how so many times we don't confess what's going on in our lives because we feel we're the only ones going through it. And oftentimes we, we, we try to be, I guess, a little uh, untruthful to God or we just give him parts of our lives. But we talked about the power of confession. And, uh, and one of the quotes that they said was, a sign of maturity isn't never needing to confess, confess sin. But a sign of maturity is having a greater freedom to confess sin. Do you know it's healthy for us to confess our shortcomings? It's healthy for us to actually be transparent with God and say, I don't have it all figured. I don't know what I'm doing. Confessing our sins to God is a move in a healthy spiritual direction. Because guess what? God asks and he desires transparency from every single one of us. But our world tells us you're not supposed to be transparent. You have to, you have to help people. You have to convince people that you have it all together and you don't struggle. But yet God's saying, no, 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 I need you to be open with me. I need you to be transparent with me. No secrecy. So we can be honest with God because he desires a relationship with each one of us. He really does. If you were with us the last six, seven weeks, we walk through a series on, on forgiveness. And uh, just a ton of good feedback from that about how God has been working. And, and so in that series, after the first, or I think the last three or four weeks, we, we talked about uh, the life of David. And we talked about different individuals that maybe some of you have never heard of before. I didn't hear of them until I started to do a, a message on forgiveness and unforgiveness. People like Ahithophel and... and uh, um, I even forgot the other guy's name. Um, anyway, there are several people, and it was just amazing to see how even this weekend so many things were talked about. Last week when we had Matt here, he talked about Amnon and, and Tamar and, uh, and, and the relationship, the broken relationship there. And, and that tied into what we talked about, you know, the previous week. And then this past weekend, uh, references were made to David. And, and I want to talk about that. Be, it just I thought it was funny because this message has been pre prepared for a couple of weeks now. And then when Matt was here uh, yesterday, he spoke on some things. And I thought, God, I think you have a word for Streams Church. I think you have a, a theme. I think you have something that you're speaking into our lives. And so, so we talked about David and King Saul. Of Israel. And you know who these two kings are. One of the kings, I mean, both of them messed up. Both of them did things that... that God wasn't pleased with. And these two kings ruled over the nation of Israel, and they were both given opportunity to confess. They were both given opportunity by God to say, okay, let's talk about it. Let's deal with this stuff. Now, the first king, he was guilty of what many of us would consider minor infractions. You know, they're not that big of a deal stuff. You know, like this king struggled with things like jealousy and, uh, and betrayal and and, uh, you know, he, he struggled with being obedient to God. And God would tell him to do things, and, and he, would, he wouldn't. He was more concerned about having it all together and looking good and having a great reputation. That's how he dealt with things when he was 
king. He would do things like, like you know, cover up stuff. And, and he, would, he would make excuses. And so when God confronted him with his sin, he did just that. He tried to justify it. Anybody try to blame anybody else in your life? Anybody like get busted on some things and or even God's like trying to deal with us and we're like, well, but I wouldn't have done that if it weren't for them. I mean, that was him. He blamed people. He tried to cover up his sin and his consequences, but ultimately it cost him his kingdom. It cost him his family and it cost him his life. When King Saul, the first king, when he was confronted, he just didn't know how to deal with it. Actually, at one point, he actually did confess sin, but this was his response. Okay, God, yes, you caught me. And he said that to the prophet Samuel, but then he said, don't tell anybody. Do not tell anybody what you just caught me in. Because I don't want to mess up my reputation. I don't want people to know that, that I don't have it all together. He was more concerned about preserving his position as a leader than he was about being right with God. A proud, unbroken, and unrepentant heart. That was our first king, King Saul. And then David, his successor, he was guilty of what we, can, what we consider even greater sins. Like this guy, man, he, he has an affair, commits adultery, and then he murders the husband of the lady that he has an affair with. And, and yet God says that David is a man after his own heart. How is that even possible? I mean, how can somebody, when confronted with their sin, how can, how can he be called the man after God's own heart, sleeps with someone else's wife, and murders her husband? Well, here's why. Because when David was confronted with his sin, his response wasn't one of defense or denial, but his response was one of transparency leading to repentance. In other words, when he recognized his sin, he confessed it, and he was sorrowful. He was broken. He was willing to acknowledge his failure, and he took personal responsibility for his actions, and he confessed and repented. Matter of fact, in 2 Samuel, this is what David went to Nathan, and, and Nathan calls him out, and, and before God, David confesses his sin, and, and he says, I have, con I have sinned against the Lord. Yeah, he suffered consequences for his sin, but David realized that not only did his relationship hurt himself, not only did his relationship hurt the, those around him, not only did his relationship hurt his, the people that he was king over, but the number one thing that concerned him was, I've sinned against you, Lord. He was broken. It's like, I know I've hurt my friends. I know my reputation is not good. I know I royally messed up. But the Bible says he was concerned because he knew he had sinned against God. He knew the most important thing in life was to be right before God no matter what it cost him. See, God doesn't break our sin down in categories. I don't know if you've realized that yet. He doesn't do that, you know. We do that. Ah, I lie here and there. It's not that big of a deal. You know, it's not that... I don't think God really cares if I cheat on my taxes. I mean, I, what's the big, you know, I'm a little jealous here and there. You know, I, I you know, I, I, I uh, yeah, I'm not always honest. Uh, you know, we, we kind of, we kind of push those things. Yeah, you know, be, I, it's okay to talk about some people sometimes. I mean, what they don't know is not going to hurt them. And so, so we, we kind of, we kind of put certain sins in a certain category. And then we put the ones like adultery and, and murder and, and addictions, and, and all those, they're a little more serious. But God's like, no, no, no. It's, it's the same, man. Like, it's the same. Sin is sin. God doesn't break them down in categories, and what's most important to God is not our sin, is our response to our sin. Some of you need to hear that. Some of you need to know that. Yeah, there's every one of us, I'm guessing, in this place, we got some pretty, pretty heavy baggage. We got some stuff in our past that we're broken by. And God needs you to know that He doesn't want you walking in shame and condemnation. 
But he's looking for your response. He's looking for your attitude. He's looking for how you're going to respond when confession happens. That's why David cries out in Psalm 51 and 10. He says, Lord, now that I have sinned against you, create in me a pure heart, a clean heart. It's there somewhere. There we go. Create in me a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, the one thing I don't want to do. David said, I just don't, I don't want to sin against you, God. I don't want to sin against you. Did you know that when that's our cry, when that's our heart not to sin against God, it's so much easier not to sin against your spouse. It's so much easier not to sin against the person that you care about. It's so much easier not to sin against your friend or, or, or those that are over you or, or those that are in, in society. It's so much easier when God becomes our priority because true repentance means an honest conversation with God has to happen. That's the number one thing. There has to be transparency. That has to be priority in our lives because when that is brought out, when we confess our sin, the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, And then God is desiring that we turn away from that sin. The, the, the confession is kind of like the first part. Repentance is the second part. Confession is like saying, okay, God, here you go. Here's what I've done. And Lord, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want to do this to you. Confessing is the transparency and repentance is the turning away. God, I don't want to hurt you anymore. Does that mean you're, we're never going to mess up again? How many know, well, no, that's not, that's not going to happen, right? Yes, we're most likely going to mess up again. It could be with the very same thing. It could be with something different. But I think when we present our hearts like David did before the Lord, knowing that, Father, I've confessed, and I'm sorry. And my relationship with you is the most important thing in my life. That's repentance. And today, I, I, you know, we, we, we celebrate what's known as Palm Sunday. And it's the Sunday that, you know, the pr preceding Easter Sunday. And, and uh, the kids downstairs got some palm branches, and they're, they're doing all of that. And... Uh, and I thought, you know, on this Palm Sunday, the week leading up to Jesus' death and resurrection, he entered Jerusalem for one purpose. And that was, that was to lead people to repentance. Did you know that? When Jesus started his earthly ministry, the Bible says the first thing he did was preach repentance. That was the number one thing on his heart. And he did that. And he wanted to restore humanity to a relationship with God. And in order to do that, he knew he was going to have to give himself as a sacrifice to save you, to save me, to save us. He knew he was going to have to do that, to give everyone an opportunity to be saved from their sin. And Easter is all about Jesus giving his life to bring us back into a relationship because that relationship was broken because of our sin, but repentance restores that relationship. Repentance restores that relationship. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering, I, I, have a, I have a series on repentance, and I'm wondering when to bring that. Lord, when do I bring that series? Because repentance is a misunderstood word. It's like, it's like something that we've almost put in the bad word category. No, repentance is a beautiful thing. It's what Jesus preached. It's on his heart. It, it means to turn away from sin, right? He, he, it's more than asking forgiveness, right? An individual has to repent in order to be forgiven, talk a little bit more of that in a moment. Re Repentance means to be sorry, to submit to, to be humbled. It means to turn back, to turn from, to withdraw from sin. True repentance leads a person to say, God, I've sinned against you, and now I'm going to live my life to, to, to please you. That is the number one thing on my heart. God, I want to please you. And people will say things like, well, it doesn't matter how you live. God's going to forgive you anyway. I don't believe that's true. I honestly don't believe it's true. Maybe you do. I, I, don't believe, I don't believe God just automatically forgives us when we live in a way that displeases him. I don't think, you know, we can just live whatever way we want and God's like, don't worry about it, you're forgiven anyway. I think we've almost misunderstood forgiveness. Re forgiveness is given after we repent of our sin. 
we have to have moments like David and so many others in Scripture who, who, are, who are presented with their sin, which God does to us all the time, right? That's what His Spirit does, convicts us of our sin. And then we have a choice to confess it to God. And then we have a choice to say, God, I don't want to live like this. And God's like, okay, that's repenting, then you're forgiven. Over and over and over. Repentance is a beautiful thing. And so is confession. And this past weekend, as I already talked about earlier on, yesterday's Men's Day was about that. I mean, we'll have it on our YouTube page, but I encourage you to check that out. I mean, it was, it was just some moments where I'm like, wow, God. I didn't see Scripture that way before. And it was so healthy. It was just just so biblical. And it was, it was just like, it was, I, I felt yesterday walking out of here as a group of men that, that we, we were given hope. And we were given like, like this, like this, this uh, not only idea, but just, just, just this presentation to us that, that you're not, you're, you're, you're past and even your present doesn't identify who you are. When you give everything to God, when you confess, when you repent, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Because repentance is at the heart of God. Holiness is who God is. It's, it's a forgotten word in our, in our time. You know, God's holiness and, and his cl just, just purity and being, being just true and real before God. Those are things that we don't often talk about much anymore. Could it be, as we conclude this today, could it be that repentance... I shouldn't say could it be. It is what he is looking for. But could it be that God is more offended with, with the approach that King Saul took, who appeared to be respectable and spiritually anointed, but who had an unteachable spirit? Could God be more offended by, by that, that kind of an attitude where, yes, God, I have it all together. Don't bother me now. Um, yeah, I know I, I'm doing some things that don't please you, but God, maybe another time. Do you think God is more offended with a heart like that who is not teachable than a heart like David who is confronted with murder and adultery, and yet David didn't deny, didn't make excuses, but laid his heart before God and said, God, I have sinned. Fornication and adultery and sexual morality, but he came to God with humility and brokenness. And this week is a week leading up to the, the crucifixion of Jesus, a week that, that turned from praise to, as I said earlier, they begin to chant, crucify him. I mean, he goes from being the savior of the world to, to the worst person that walked the streets in some people's eyes. They just hated Jesus. And so this week we thought maybe this would be a great week to have a week of fasting. And if you're thinking here today, oh gosh, here we go again, the fasting talk. I just really, I'm not, I'm not in the, listen, then you shouldn't, okay? Maybe you should, but, but you, no, no, like, fasting is not, is not for God, okay? It's not like, well, I better do this because God, no, no, fasting wasn't created for God. It was created for us. All right, so it's not like, well, if I don't fast, I may, I'm going to walk in dis. No, 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 it's not about disobedience. It's not about any of those things. Unless God specifically speaks to you and says, yeah, you, you need to do a fast. This fasting thing, this, this week of fasting that we want to do, is that it will be a, a spiritual awakening within each one of us. That we would go deep with God. We'll have times of confession before God. That we'll have those moments where God's able to... Because there's something about fasting that just clears your mind. It clears your spiritual mind. And you're able to think. You're, God's able to get our attention. It could be three in the morning or three in the afternoon. All of a sudden, there's these moments with God. And sometimes, even during fast, let's just be honest, fasting, sometimes you walk out of it, and you're like, I don't feel anything was accomplished. That could happen. It's like every day, you know, you, you have breakfast, and you're thinking, well, I don't really think that, that helped much. But, but actually, those kind of things, without it, you're going to die, right? Eventually, you'll starve. So, so we don't see the, we don't see the, the benefits and, and, and all the good things that come from it in a day or in a week. Sometimes, we don't understand how, benefit, how beneficial it is to us till, till a year later or a month later. 
But fasting opens up a whole new experience between God and ourselves, right? And it's meant to bring us close to God. It doesn't, I mean, God, as I said, doesn't need us to fast. For him, he needs us to fast for us. And so I want to just talk a little bit about this. It could be food. For me, that's my stronghold, i got to be honest. <laughs> I, I, I'm a comfort eater, and I just, I just eat for the sake of eating. If, if I, my stomach doesn't feel full, time to eat, you know? So I know, I know what the vice is in my life. For me, fasting is I got to give up some food. I, I'm going to do, you know, that's, that's just me. I want to do a week of fasting from food. But for you, it, it, maybe that's not a big deal. Well, then you shouldn't do that. I think it's identifying things in our lives that are strongholds and fasting from them. You know what I found out yesterday in our thing? That, you know, for, for a long time, i just been oblivious, I guess. I just thought there were rehabilitation centers for people who were addicted to, to things like drugs and, 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 you know, all. Do you know now that there are rehabilitation centers for people who are addicted to, to uh, technology? I'm serious. They actually cannot break free from this. They can't turn their computer off. They can't turn their phone off. They're addicted. And now you can go to these places for treatment. If you're sitting here today and you're like, there's no way I could do that. There's no way I can give up my technology. Maybe you need to fast from it. Because it has a stronghold in your life. And it's become a God to you. I just confess to you, my God is, is food. I, I love food. Maybe your God is, is technology, or maybe your God is, is some sports, or your God is who, who knows what it is. But fasting is laying down that God and saying, Lord, take it out of my life. Because how many know that God cannot get our attention when something else is our God? And we can come and sing our songs and we can hear sermons and we can go to our favorite worship or evangelists or we can have our conversations, our small groups. But if, if there's something in our life that's God more than him, it's not going to work. And so fasting is an invitation to you, the body of Christ. And I know the Bible teaches us, you know, don't let, you know, when you fast, don't like, you know, you had a rough night of sleep because you're hungry and you walk out the door and your hair is all messed up. You haven't shaved for a week. No, no. Bible says don't, don't kind of go out with that sort of, oh, I just hope people know I'm fasting. No, I mean, that, the Bible says that's not the point of it, right? But I think in corporate fasting, it's, it's more for the accountability. And you know, we're not going to have a sign-up sheet saying, hey, sign up if you're going to fast. But, but it's to be accountable to one another and to encourage one another and to do this as a church. And so it's an invitation it's not an expectation. And so it may be for you, you can't fast the whole week. But maybe you can fast a day or two days or three days. Or you can fast your lunches or your suppers. Or you can fast technology. You can fast what? The point is, I'm inviting you on a journey. Because for us to make a difference in the world outside these walls, we have to walk in purity. We have to walk in holiness. We have to walk clean. We have to give God everything in our lives. And there's power in fasting. And so, I believe this week is not just to say, okay, I'm going to abstain from food. I'm going to abstain from tech. I'm going to abstain from... But it's to replace that with prayer. So don't forget, this is a week of prayer and fasting. And if you're like, this is a burden, I don't want to do it, then it's probably not going to work. But if you're able today sometime to pull away just you and God time and say, Lord, is this something I should go on? Is this a journey that's going to be productive for my walk with you? If God speaks into your life and says, yeah, why don't we do this? Then I'm encouraging you to do it. And if you don't make it, it's okay. You're not a bad person. God's not disappointed in you. I think the point is to say, God, I'm open to you doing a work in my life. And I want to be clean. Create in me a pure heart. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, I want you. I want to do it your way. Maybe it's a place this week where you're going to have moments to confess things to the Lord. And just say, God, I haven't been living the way that, 
that you want me to live in. I, I don't want to live. Maybe it's going to be a t just a, a, a week of just repenting and laying it before the Lord and saying, I need to be, Lord, I need you to take care of, care of this. I'm also believing, one more thing before we wrap our time up. I'm also believing that this week of fasting, it's a, it's, a, it's a prayer to God saying, Lord, we want to see salvations in our church. We want to see salvations at our kitchen table. We want to see salvations in the break room at our workplace. Lord, we want to see people know who you are. And I believe fasting helps. It, 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 prayer and fasting moves the heart of God. I really believe it does. And maybe you've been praying for somebody in your family to come to know Jesus. And maybe a fast, prayer and fasting is going gonna, is gonna to open their heart to God trying to do something. I mean, I don't, wanna, I don't have all the answers. Like I told you back a couple of months ago, this is a new journey that I'm even on. But I know there's significance to it. I'm going to invite you to stand with, with us today. And often we, we will conclude our morning with, with maybe a, a song or, or a worship team. And, uh, but today, you know what? We just want to leave you with this uh, teaching from Jesus' word. Just, you know what? I think God is, is wanting to reach into each of our hearts. And he, he cares about you. And no, you don't have it at, to have it all together. And he loves you and desires relationship, deep relationship with you. And he notices you. And he wants to restore what, what's broken. I, I, was so ex, such a, I was just so, so uh, taken back. You know, I, I, I read a lot of stuff on making disciples and discipleship journeys and, and you know, how, you, how to grow churches and, and all that stuff. And sometimes I wonder if we're more concerned about inviting people into church rather than into a life of Christ. And, and I was just so taken back when I read this one church. I don't even know what it was. And it said a core value of their church is repentance. Because I may know we cannot pursue a relationship with Christ unless repentance happens. Unless confession happens. And God wants to have those moments with each one of us. And so as we conclude our time today and pray, why don't you take a few moments now, you and God, and begin that journey. You don't have to wait till tonight. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. And have, have a conversation with the Lord. Lord, examine my heart. I want to be clean before you. And so, Father, today as you look down, or however that works, you're here now, looking across, up, I don't, I don't know. But, God, you're here, and as you check our hearts, Lord, our prayer is that we would we'd be right with you. And we live in a world that, that tries to convince us that we're supposed to do it right. We're supposed to have it all together. We're supposed to look a certain way, act a certain way, smell a certain way, be a certain way. And yet, your God, you, you, you look at the heart. And I thank you for reminding us that we don't have to have it all together. We just have to be in right relationship with you. And so, Father, today, I thank you for speaking to us. As we sang earlier, spirit break out. I pray, Father, your spirit would break out in our lives later today, tomorrow, this week of fasting. Lord, your spirit will begin to speak into our lives, we begin to show us things that we've been oblivious to or, or, or convict us of things that we've hidden deep down. But, Lord, we pray that, that Lord, you, your word even says you're coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. So, Lord, we want to prepare your return. We want our hearts to be right before you. We want to be people of righteousness, not unrighteousness. So do the work you need to do in each one of us individually. Lord, that we may bless you and honor you. And so, Lord, take us on a journey as a church. Renew our minds. Help us each day, Lord, to live life to please you. And so, Father, we offer all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, anybody want to go on a journey of a week of prayer and fasting? I'm all in. I encourage you. The invite's there. Next weekend, don't forget Easter Sunday. Listen, when you leave today, we would love to hand one of these out to you, one per family or a couple. I don't know, but would you find someone this week, there's your challenge, and invite them out. I, uh, I chatted with some people yesterday as I gave them some of these cards, and uh, 
One, one, a couple actually people said this. They have never been inside of a church before. I thought, what? Well, I mean, you're, you live in Canada. Like, you ne never been inside of a church. Has no idea what goes on behind these walls. They've never been invited. So I'm like, hey, you are now. I don't know if they'll show up. But that's not our job. That's God's job. But I know enough to know that when you pray for opportunity, you say, God, open conversations. He will give them. He will put them right in front of you. And then he's like, be bold. And share Christ. Share the love of Jesus. God wants to do a great work. And he's going to use us to do it. All right? God bless you. Take one of these before you leave. Don't feel you got to rush out. Have a conversation. Say hi to someone you don't know. Bless you. Have a great week, and uh, see you next Sunday.